Now, he was talking about different things. How many likes new stuff? How many, okay, girls. Okay, girls. Let's talk to you girls. Maybe you boys, too. We'll find out. How many girls would like, or how many of you girls like new clothes? Ooh, who wants to go shopping? Who wants to go shopping? Yeah. Clifton, give me your credit card. We're taking these girls shopping. I got the keys to Sorry. But you girls like, like new clothes? You like, like, how about this? Boys, I'm going to come to you in just a second. How about a new hairdo? Shoes. Please, come on. Shoes. We are in church, sister. Who likes to go get their hair done? Amanda? Shoes. Okay, girls. Okay, boys. Who likes to get your nails done? I just want to clear your hand. Nobody, no boys. How many girls likes getting their nails done? Or women, or teens, or whatever. Come on, Amanda. How many adults would like a new car? Oh, oh yeah. Huh? yeah. A new car, a new Corvette. Or, uh, how many? I might be in trouble with this. So maybe we better not ask it, but then again, I don't care. How many would like a new baby brother or a new baby sister? No. No. All right, Alice. Got one for you. Jeffrey, congratulations. You're a little old, but hey. I have three brothers, um, two sisters, two nieces, and two nephews. You? Oh, new brother, new sister. Looks like Kyle's getting another one. All right. Super. All right, Jeffrey, you're getting two. Nathan. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? New babies? New babies all the way around. Okay, everybody, we're going to have a prayer service after it's done. Y'all come up. We're going to pray that everybody has a new baby. No, I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is we like we like new stuff, don't we? New things are cool. Boys, how many... Uh, hmm, what do boys like? Pizza. All right. There's Nintendo Wii U. Who would like a Nintendo Wii U? Or how about a brand new DS? Yes. We're preaching now. Praise the Lord. I got their attention. Yes, sir. No, we we just got a we just got a baby Wii. I don't have a real Wii. Just a, a little, little week. Uh, what else? What else, boys? What's something else that you like that's new? An Xbox 360. Xbox One? Yeah! Ooh. Never thought I was old until just right now. No idea what an Xbox One is. I thought Xbox One was like the old Xbox. Okay, what's an Xbox 360? That's the second one. Okay, we're getting way off track here. No, 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 we're not. So I was thinking about what's new. How many would like an Atari? Oh, yeah. Well, I would. Like. <laughs> I love Ataris. Okay, let's get past that. Okay, how about, how many remembers those little machines that uh, you turn on and it's like, it's like vibrates and it look like, and it's supposed to be like a hockey game. Awesome, right? You guys aren't helping me. Um, all right, we're giving away cars today. Guess what? Somebody is getting a rusty 1967 Impala. It's a Hot Wheel. Christopher. Oh, it's a picture. Let's show some pictures. Now, when you guys want old stuff, how many want some old used nails? Girls. You want somebody else's fingernails? I want old stuff. That was peeled off. I want old stuff. You want new ones? It. You don't want nails. Okay, I'm not talking about the police anymore. Who wants, who wants new nails? Amanda. <laughs> Would you rather have somebody's used fingernails? Glued back on. And just glued back on and repainted? Or would you rather have new nails? New nails. New nails. Alright. Who would rather have an old car or who would want a brand new car? Old car. I just want it. Old car. Give me a ticket. Okay, Christopher, let's show some pictures here. Let's show. We'll start with the old. Out with the old. And with the new. There's a nice house. It looks okay, but it's an old house, right? So, and look, there's Farmer John. I didn't even know he was in the picture. Not Brother Boyles. But, um, you can have this house, which is an old house, probably built somewhere in the, I would say, probably 
early 60s, maybe late 50s. Or, here's a brand new house that was built just about, they just finished it, I think, about, about three weeks ago. So who would rather have the old house? Not that we don't appreciate the old house, but if you got to choose, who wants the old house? Guys, come on. That's no. too much. There we go. So who would rather have the new house? All right, that's what we're saying. Okay. Next, Christopher. Car is free. It runs. Who wants it? A few. <laughs> Now you get a choice, but you only get one or the other, okay? Next, Christopher. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who would rather have the new one? Okay, so, so everybody who wants the old one, raise your hand. And who wants the new one? I would rather have the new one. Alright, next. Remember our scripture, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and all things have become brand new. Next. Oh, okay. Well, that is that. All right, well, now, Justin, come here. I need your help. Justin's been working out. Justin's looking buff. He has tall shirts on. Don't you think so? Hey, Trevor, can you go over there and sit? Where? Come here, Justin. Justin was a brand new baby boy. Made Kurt and Tammy very happy because the other baby boy that they had just didn't fulfill all their dreams, I guess. I don't know. So, when we asked who wanted a new baby, Kurt and Tammy both had their hands up, or Tammy had their, I don't know, somebody had their hand up, and behold, here's Justin. But the Bible says that when we are born, we're born sinners. We're not, I mean, we're babies, so we're under the, uh, the, we're under the protection of innocence, but sin is bred into a new baby. That's why babies throw fits. That's why babies' first words are usually no, or at least that's what my kids. And uh, so when we're born, we're born as sinners. We're covered by innocence, but we're born as sinners. That's what the Bible says. So when Justin came into the world, Justin was a sinner, not by his own fault, but just because, we'll go back to Adam and Eve, we're not blaming, well, let's blame, if we're going to push blame, let's blame somebody. Adam did not have control of his wife, and so she ventured off and did what she wasn't supposed to do, and God got on to Adam, even though Eve's the one that committed to sin, so it was Adam's fault. Because of that, we were born sinners, but Justin got older. And Justin is a preacher's grandkid. So Justin knew one day that, hey, I've got to do this. And so he, uh, we'll try to do this without getting hurt. So Justin decided to get saved. Now, Justin came down to the altar. Justin knelt down and everybody seen him do it. We all watched him. We don't have it when he did it. And he's down in the altar and he prayed and Everybody was just like, oh, praise God, Justin has found Jesus, okay? But see, what happened was, is Justin just came down and did what he thought he was supposed to do. He didn't do what God really wanted him to do. He did something that he thought, you know, everybody would be happy if I did this. So to get everybody off my back, I'm just going to go down and I'm going to pray. But see, then Monday came. And church is over with. He's away from church. Justin got around his kids. And guess what? Justin's still the same person he was before he went to the altar because nothing changed. Nothing. The old didn't go away. The new didn't come. Justin is just the same boy. Justin still talks the same way he used to talk. He still uses uh, the, the jokes that he uses, the things that he did, the things he gets talked into doing or whatever. Nothing changed with Justin. But then Sunday came. And we, you know, he has to go to church because his parents go to church. So he had to go to church too. So Justin, when altar call came, Justin did what he was supposed to do. And Justin went back down to the altar and Justin prayed. And, and don't worry, he'll have clothes on when this is over with. So don't be scared. But Justin went back down to the altar and, uh, let me check something. 
So Joseph went down to the altar, and he did the same thing that he had done the last time, and he had prayed, and everybody's seen him. And, you know, some people may not even know what Justin did that week before, but see, God knew what Justin had done that week before, and that's what's important. So Justin has a conscience, and he knew what he had done was wrong, so he went back to the altar, and he prayed again. He's like, Lord, I'm sorry I did this. But see, remember last week we were talking about walking along that line and how you can walk right here. Now, the devil could get so far, and Justin was staying right here. Justin did not choose to walk out there. Justin stayed up here. But Justin did it again. He went out to the altar. Praise God for second chances. Amen? Amen. We get second chances. Justin got a second chance. Went out to the altar. He prayed. Everybody's like, hallelujah. Boy, Justin is just really getting into church. And then Monday came, and he went back to school. And Justin went back to acting the same way he had acted the week before. Justin didn't change again. He had another chance. And Justin went back to the old lifestyle that he had. And he did the same things that he did. He talked the same way he talked. He used the same jokes. He used the same curse words. He, he did all these things. He was talked into things. He was deceived by the devil. He said, this looks cool. So he did that. He said, doing that looks cool. So he did that. And Justin did all those things. And Justin is still the same old creature. Nothing has changed. Nothing's become new. The scripture didn't take place. But then, Justin had an epiphany. Justin had something happen to him that said, wait a second, I know what I'm doing wrong. I say that I'm a Christian, but I don't act like a Christian. I say that I'm a Christian, but I don't talk like I'm a Christian. Now, could you tell the difference between Justin and and just a regular person who's never been to church in their life? No, you couldn't. And Justin finally figured that out. He goes, what's the difference between me and them? We're the same. But I go to church, and that's the only difference. But going to church doesn't save you. Amen. Going to church is good, and I'm not against it. So if you're not saved, don't stop going to church. But going to church is not what gets you to heaven. But Jesus died on the cross that we could have salvation. And Jesus bled on the cross so that we could have healing and have all these things. All of a sudden, it made sense. Justin said in the church, like, whoa, I get it. I'm an old creature. And the only way that I'm going to get to heaven is if Jesus, if I let Jesus make a change me. So Justin went down to the altar. And this time it was different. This time, Justin let the blood of Jesus come into his heart. And so church is over with. He goes on with his life. Monday comes, he gets around those same friends. This time, though, it's different. This time, when he got around those friends, he, got, he wasn't mean to them. He's like, no, he didn't use the language that he used. He didn't tell the same jokes that he told. Because, see, Justin got saved. And this time, the blood of Jesus applied. So, Monday comes, Tuesday comes, Wednesday comes. Justin's still saved. Next one. Friday comes, Saturday comes. Justin is still the same. Sunday comes back, and we find out what happened to Justin. He's still the same. One more. This is the last one. They want to know his. Hold on, hold on. His friends want to know. Like you know, this we used to hang out with Justin. Justin used to be really cool. He used to be really funny. Now he's lame and stupid. That's what his friends think about him, because Justin ain't. Justin, see, Justin was an old creature, but then found Christ, and he became a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away, and all things become new. Justin, what is so different about you? Why are you so much different than us? How come you're happy now all of a sudden, when you used to be mad and complain about everything? You used to have anger and rage, and you used to have this temper that you would kill people, and, and all this stuff. What changed in you, Justin? What, what's the deal? And then Justin takes off the next shirt. And we find out what happened to Justin. Justin got Jesus in his heart. Justin is no longer the same person. Because see, this time when Justin went down to the altar, Justin said, you know, I've, I've done this over and over and over. And we don't know what Justin does whenever he leaves church. I'm his uncle, and I don't know what he does when he leaves church. Justin works a job. I don't know what he does when he's at work. 
Okay? I don't know what he does except on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights and any time through the week that we get to see each other. Then I know what he's doing. Other than that, I don't know. But you know who knows what Justin does every day and all day and every week and all week and every month and all month and every year and all year? Jesus knows. But see, when you got Christ in your heart, old things pass away. Let's see how many chances Justin had. Justin started off as a sinner, so that's one. Then Justin messed up, that's two. Justin messed up again, that's three. God gives you plenty of chances to get it right. Okay? One day, though, have you ever heard the story of Noah where, where the part of it, the rain started and the door of the ark went shut? Noah was on the inside of the ark. He had preached and told everybody to get on the ark, but nobody got on the ark but him and his family. Noah was on the inside trying to open the door because there's people that was about to go down. He's warned them, but he wanted them safe still. One day, God's going to shut that door and you're not going to have another chance. It'll be your last chance. But you can get it right tonight. You can get it right right now. If you have not asked Jesus into your heart, like we do this every Sunday, we can come down here and watch this. Dear Lord, forgive me of my sins. Um, amen. And that's it. I said a quick little prayer. I got up really quick. Now I'm on my way out the door. Did something change in me? Or am I, am I a new person? Did I change? Or am I the single person? And that's what we've got to figure out. Something's got to change in us in order to be a Christian. You can't go and keep doing the same things that you do over and over and over and continue to call yourself a Christian. You just keep putting that black shirt on, putting it on, and putting it on, and putting it on. But I say, just as we're going to walk away from the devil out there like we did last week, that who would like to have a shirt like this? Who would rather not have, not have, uh, what did they go? <laughs> who would like to keep putting this shirt on over and over and over and over and letting the devil trick you and letting him say, you can't live a Christian life. You're too weak. You're too young. You're too old. You're too fat. You're too skinny. Whatever. You can't do it because the words in the Bible are too big. But guess what? You can you can live a Christian life on Monday. You can live a Christian life on Tuesday. You can live one on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and come back on Sunday and still be a Christian person. Isn't that amazing? How great is God?